Hey, sixth graders, uh, this is your math video for April 29th. Um, this is a Wednesday, so I am here um, and going to explain to you some things about histograms. Um, so, uh, for today, remember, I am going to need to see your uh, test score or your quiz score um, on, via email um, from, from you or your parents. Um, and that needs to be uh, like a screenshot and sent to me. So I need that by today. The goal was to have that in by noon. So hopefully you have um, been working on that and that can get to me by noon today. So be working, be focused, and um, I'm excited to see how we do on those quizzes. Alrighty, speaking of quizzes, we're gonna use a, a test scores today for our histogram. And so we'll kind of hopefully see the correlation here between this. All right, so 9-5 histogram. This is our next section in our book. First of all, we always like to put our definition down. So we need to make sure our notes are out and we can write this down in our notes. What we are looking at today is something called a histogram. Now, this is a type of bar graph that shows frequency of data within intervals. So let me move back here so you can look at the definition and get that into your notes. A histogram is a type of bar graph. So we are going to be seeing bars, but this is a couple things that we want to keep in mind with a histogram. One, we are not going to have any space between our bars. So I believe you've done bar graphs in the past, uh, probably maybe, you know, fourth grade, fifth grade, but today we're doing a type of bar graph that is called a histogram and it does not have space between the bars, so we're not gonna see space. The second thing, we are going to be using intervals, and I'll explain that when we get into our example here. I think the best way to do this is to do an example to see how this works. So you are going to see intervals, and these intervals need to be equal. That means when you create your intervals for whatever makes sense with your data, your interval intervals are all equal. They're the same amount. Okay, so now let's look over here to an example. There's multiple examples in your book that you can look at and study and get more ideas of how to do this, but this is one I have picked that isn't in your book. Um, there's something similar to it, but this might just make sense with what we do here in school and what we've done here in class. So let's look at this. Uh, so let's say we are going to do test scores. So we've just taken, let's say, a big math test or our quiz. And um, we are going to then look at our class and see, okay, let's create some intervals, let's create some ranges, and then let's see who falls into those ranges. Now, histograms are really good, especially for people collecting data, like as a teacher, this is helpful to me to see, okay, I'm gonna take these different ranges and I'm gonna see how many people fell into this range, how many people fell into this range. This helps me see, okay, did a portion of my class um, just bomb this and fall into these low ranges um, and then I need to do something. Something needs to change or we need to go back over that. Something wasn't clicking. Um, so this just gives us, this gives us good information about data and helps us see and what's great about bar graphs. Um, they're very visible, they're very visual and that you can just look at them and read them quickly and easily. Okay, so let's say we're taking our, te our test, we take it, we turn it in, we get all of our scores. Now, we um, are gonna fall within these intervals. Hopefully, let's say, we're just gonna say no one fell below a 60. So our interval started at 60. Now, the first one we, we made 60 to 69. So we think, okay, here we go. Who fell between a 60? Remember, we've talked about this, that's like a D minus, to a 69, that would be a D plus. So how many people, well, after all the kids take the test, I collect them. And I see, okay, four people, four pieces of data. So four times there's four of that, that's frequency. Uh, student A, student B, student C, student D. These four people fell within this interval of 60 to 69. My next interval, I go down, okay, I'm gonna make it 70 to 79. So see how we have nine, a range of nine every single time in these intervals. Intervals have to be equal. They can't be like, Oh, I'm gonna make this one 60 to 69, but then I'm gonna make this one 70 to 90. Okay, that would not work. We wouldn't wanna do that. We wanna make sure our intervals are all equal.
Okay, so we go down to 70 to 79. Okay, let's see who fell between 70 and 79. Oh, five people, we got it. Five, that represents five students. Fell between 70 and 79. Okay, did I go down 80 to 89? Okay, so this is the next interval. Oh, four people fell within that range. 90 to 99, three people. Now remember, especially with our math test, we can get that extra credit. Well, who fell between 100 and 109? Oh, three students. Now, if I add my frequencies, and I add up this list, I realize, oh, there were 19 frequencies. That means there was 19 pieces of data. That would be 19 people, let's say, in this class. Uh, we would, if we were doing everyone in, in, in our sixth grade, we would do, what, 53 there. So if I added, let's say, all the classes together, but if this was just like block one, or block two, or block three, oh, that's 19 kids, that's 19 pieces of data. Four fell between this interval, five fell with, between these, four, between this one, three, between this one, three, between 100 and 109. Okay, now, so there's our information, we gathered it. There's our data. Now let's go over here and make a, a histogram based on this data. So after I've gathered my data, um, a histogram is going to have the intervals down here at the bottom. So we're going to create a line and we're going to say, okay, let's start with our, let's start with our first interval. That was 60 to 69. Okay. Our next interval was 70 to 79. Next one, 80 to 89, 90 to 99 and 100 to 109. Okay. There's our intervals. We put that at the bottom and we could just even identify that as test scores intervals. Okay, so those are the intervals that, I mean, I could have created different intervals if I wanted. I could have gone from um, 60 to let's say 79, and I could have had less intervals and had them be in a larger range. Kind of just depends on how you want to break it down. What, what are you looking for in your data? Okay, now I'm going to come up this side. So this is like quadrant one that we've talked about, our four quadrant grid. So we're sitting here in this quadrant. Now up here, this is going to be what we call our frequencies. So this is, this is this, this column. Now, <clears throat> we have to ask ourselves, what, how big did our frequencies get? Well, they got up to a five and they started at a three. So what would make sense for our frequencies on this side? Well, probably since these numbers are so low, it would make sense to just count by ones. So obviously remember this is our origin. So this is zero. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, and we can just go up to a six. Now this side here, this is our frequency, so you can even identify that so you know what so you know what you're doing. Say, okay, this is frequency. Now, <clears throat> up here we're gonna say, okay, we're gonna, this is math test scores. Okay, <clears throat> now let's go back and let's look at okay, 60, 69, there was four. So we're gonna come up. Remember, this is a frequency type, we're gonna come to four, and then we're gonna create our bar. So there's our four, then we would just color this in. And kids in the, in the past, when we do this math assignment, we see some amazing, beautiful colors. Uh, always fun to do different colors. It adds, adds some appeal to this um, histogram. Then we go to 70, 79, that's a five. So we can just come up to the five, come down. Now remember, we're not leaving any space between our bars because this is a certain type of, of bar graph. This is a, doing a histogram, doesn't have space. So they're just right, right beside each other. Okay, now let's go to 80, 89, that was four. So we're gonna come back down. There's our 80 to 89. Okay, coloring it in. You guys can do some amazing, fun colors. Okay, 90 to 99, that was three. So we're gonna come back down to three. Color it in. Okay, our last one, our, oh, three people. Right there in that extra credit the test and there we go okay so now we've created our histogram that goes along with our uh, test score intervals and frequency so based on this information our bar graph shows us okay if I'm looking and I'm a teacher and I look to see okay uh, kids that scored between 60 and 69, there was four of them. Hmm, okay, is that too high? Is that too many? Uh, what, what happened there? 70 to 79, okay, what is that? It's right there in that C range. Okay, we have five that scored that. Okay, five in the C range. In the B range, up 
okay, well, the B range, we're back down to four. In the A range, okay, that was our, our three. And then over that, I'm going to see if I can be a little bit taller. Um, make sure it's a little hard to eyeball here on the whiteboard. Uh, but there we go. Okay, so going back, our histogram is a type of bar graph. Okay, so we see our bars, we see why it's saying that, and it shows frequency. Here's our frequency. Now these frequencies could be, if we're gathering a ton of data, and, and there's like a lot of people we're talking to or a lot of different pieces of data that we're, we're putting together, this obviously these frequencies could get pretty high. So then your frequency side needs to be uh, maybe counting by twos or counting by fives. It, it, you can kind of guess and, and think about it, like make that common sense um, analysis of, okay, what should be my frequency numbers? Then our intervals, remember this is very important. Intervals need to be equal. So we need to make sure we, we just need to decide what makes sense with the da data we're gathering for an interval. So um, if, we were, if we were doing, I'm gonna assign you a extra problem here today where you're gonna, you're gonna look up the speeds of animals and how fast they run. And if you look up all these speeds and they're going starting at 20 and they're going up to like 60 miles per hour, let's say, um, your intervals would need to make sense with those speeds. So you wouldn't want, and, and, and they usually say within a histogram to at least have minimum of three intervals to four. So we don't want to make too big of intervals because it's really hard to understand the data and, and see, okay, it doesn't make it as clear. So think about that goal of making at least three to four intervals, if not, you know, maybe five. So just based, I guess, on, on the information you're looking at. So uh, you would want those, those speeds of those animals to make sense um, in your intervals. Um, you want, let's say if the speeds are kind of falling between 20 and 60, your intervals are gonna make sense of that. Maybe your intervals are gonna go zero to nine, 10 to 19. You, you know, and you might not have any in the zero to nine. We just don't know. Um, but you would, you could, or you could start at a little higher amount, maybe starting at 10 to, 10 to 19 miles per hour. Um, so you're, you're just gonna make sense with your, with your information. Just don't make your intervals too big. Like I said, it, it's harder to read that when they're, when they're that large. Okay, <clears throat> so this is, this is what you're gonna be doing today. Now, this is what I think would be best for us is if you open up your books to page 330. We are gonna go through questions uh, three through six together. So we're gonna do that. So I'm gonna turn the video so we can go over here on this other side of the whiteboard. And we can do questions three through six together and I'll do it on the whiteboard. You're gonna do it on your paper. So you are technically doing page 330, questions three through 10. But three through six, we're gonna do right now. I'll be on the video here and you're gonna be doing it on your, on your paper. And then you're gonna be on your own for seven through 10. And then I'm gonna give you that little bonus question, fun little question that you're gonna be answering. You're gonna be doing a little research. So if you could get your books open, I'll move our video so we can come to this side. And we are going to be looking at uh, three through six together. All right, so let's do that. Actually, maybe I'll just move this all over here. Okay, now let's look at this next uh, little part. Okay, books open. We're gonna read up at the top and it says the frequency table shows the daily miles traveled by a car. Use the table for exercises three through six. So we're gonna do those here together. So let's start on number three. We'll put that on our paper. We're on page 330. We're doing questions three through a 10, and then I'll tell you that other little extra question we're gonna do. Okay, so back to number three. Number three said, how many observations were made in this data set? Okay, we're gonna go to that, to that box to the left. That is giving us the information. Now, let's look at our intervals for this, this box. Okay, so the intervals are going a little bit like we did with our um, test scores, zero to nine, 10 to 19, so they're a range of nine. So our intervals 
Oh, let's see. Yep, they're all matching. They're equal, so they did a good job on their intervals there. And now we're going to look to the right of those intervals, and we're going to see the frequency. So that means the daily miles traveled by a car. So in interval 0 to 9, that means two people said, so two pieces of data said, yes, I drive 0 to 9 miles in my car per day. Okay, that's daily. So two pieces of data. So two people said that was how much I drive. Now we go to 10 to 19, three. Okay, so three pieces of data. So three people would mark that box to say, okay, that's how far I drive. 20 to 29, eight. Okay, so definitely there's our mode right there, the 20 to 29, that interval would be our mode. Uh, that's, that's a pretty popular uh, amount of miles. Oh, now 30 to 39, six, 40 to 49, two, 50 to 59. So that's like almost like going up to Portland one way. That's four. So four people drive 50 to 59 miles in a day. Now, how do we know how many observations? Well, we would need to just add up our frequencies because every single frequency is a piece of data. So if we add those all up, we should come up with 25. So that means 25 people were polled and asked, okay, how far do you do? How far do you drive? And then obviously when they, they gave their answer, you would mark that into one of those intervals. And, and there, that's a piece of data. Okay, so we have 25 frequencies. That means we have, we have 25 observations. Now let's go to number four. What does each observation represent? So every time someone gave you information, they were telling you how many miles they drive in their car. So what are we gathering? Well, we're gathering the number of miles that are traveled in a day in one day because this is daily now number five construct so number four would say number of miles driven in a day okay so that's what we were gathering construct a histogram to represent the data all right so Number five, we're gonna actually construct our histogram. They've already done the chart for us. So we're just gonna pull the information from the chart and put it into our histogram.